Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Cold War barrels, and we're going to be talking specifically about range. I already did a video where I kind of covered all the various bullet velocities for all the barrels for the rifles, LMGs, SMGs, sniper rifles, to make it as clear as possible. But one of the things that you kind of kind of combine with that information is the actual range of the weapon. And based off the range of the weapon, how much does that actually change the TTK at various ranges? And where does that fit within the meta? Is there some secret attachment here that's actually going to improve your range and bullet velocity that makes that a viable option that is not currently being used? That's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to look through all of that, look at the TTKs of the various weapons using the longest range option, and kind of give you a better idea so you're more informed when you're creating your class setup. If you enjoy the video, learn something new, please do me a favor, hit that like button. If you're brand new, looking to find your way back, maybe you just haven't subscribed, double check, make sure you subscribe with notifications on. Let's go ahead and get into it. So pretty much what you're able to do without actually having to go in and to get into a private match and test damage values, all you have to test for is damage change. So what you're looking at in the gameplay in the background is me working with Snake Eyes, a longtime supporter on the channel who's been helping me out, one of my mods. Um, so I definitely appreciate his support for these types of things. And what we're able to do is basically I mark a distance, I shoot him. I move, I shoot him, I move, I shoot him, and I continue this process, and he lets me know when he's at full health and if the damage value changed. And then we just continue to repeat this, and we see if it either improves the range, decreases the range, or there's no change at all. And it's kind of a tedious process. You kind of got to go, all right, cool, you're full health. All right, cool, let me go ahead and move another meter. Let me move another meter. Let me move another meter. And you just continue this process. And the whole time, you're hoping that no one comes over and interrupts this because then you got to kind of restart the whole process of where you're positioning and testing all that type of stuff. So that's what I've done. And let's go ahead and take a look at the results. So on the 16th, I end up doing this for all the bullet velocity. So you can kind of see those there. And I shared that spreadsheet, which again, I'm going to go ahead and link. It's continually updating as I add in more information. So it's shared down there if you want to use it as a resource and figure out how you want to build your individual class setup. So I've done the same thing here is I've highlighted the, the when it helps and when it hurts. For the XM4, we're getting another penalty when you're equipping any of these barrels. They're going to hurt your overall range in addition to hurting the bullet velocity in some of the cases we saw. So the base range isn't even all that great. It's right at 22 meters. But if you equip these, it's about a 10% reduction. It probably ends up being exactly 10% but because of a little bit of rounding, it ends up being 9% on this spreadsheet. If we go over to the Groza, we see some significant improvement for all of these. The biggest is with the ultralight, but if we go back to bullet velocity, we're looking at the ultralight. It's not really helping bullet velocity, so that kind of checks it off as a long range barrel. He's got to kind of use it for that short sniper support, which is still perfectly viable. Let's go ahead and continue looking through these, and then we'll kind of give a snapshot on what are some of the best to be using. So over here, we get the reinforced, which does 23% improvement. It's only a couple meters different. The composite is probably going to be the best on the Groza, just because that increases at 32%. Not quite as much as the ultralight. It's like a meter difference. But when we go to bullet velocity, the Gru composite is giving you 72%. Without the ADS penalty, a lot of the other barrels within Modern Warfare works. Obviously, the, the Modern Warfare logic doesn't necessarily work on Cold War guns, so you just got to be aware of that. So that is probably going to be the best barrel overall. And then we continue on. Obviously, you can use the mil spec, which is the task force. It gives you a little bit of range, a couple extra meters. But at the end of the day, it's not really helping out bullet velocity as much as the Gru composite. So you kind of have to choose what makes the most sense there. We'll go to the AK-47. You can see that all these hurt your bullet velocity. But when we get over here, we get the similar pattern. It's almost like they copied everything over from the XM4 and the AK-47. So you pretty much should not be using barrels on those two weapons, and they should only be used as sniper support. So as you can see, there's not a, no, there's not a barrel worth using on the AK-47. When we get to the FFAR, we get these various improvements here. Task Force, Reinforce Heavy, Cavalry, Ultralight, which is helping out quite a bit. But when we go to Reinforce Heavy, we're getting a big chunk there. It's going to be 46 meter range. It adds on at 10 extra meters. And then we go over here. We're getting the FFAR, 51% increase. You get 902 bullet velocity. If you want to go for the Ranger, which is going to give you the extra bullet velocity, the problem is on the range, it's not going to help you out. So you kind of got that trade-off. But you know, maybe you want to really use this for range because you're laser accurate. You might want those extra 200 meters per second to make it feel a little bit closer to hit scan. You don't have to lead your shot quite as much. There's always going to be trade-offs, but there are, at least now you have information to make the educated decision on what you actually want to use. 
Most people are going to use the FFAR as a point blank option. Um, so you don't necessarily need as much bullet velocity. So the reinforced heavy might be the way to go unless you're looking at the task force, which helps with that side to side recoil, um, but will increase your vertical. And it just depends on what your what kind of recoil you're comfortable dealing with. The QBZ, we have that as well. We got the ultra light and the reinforced heavy, which are basically a meter difference. Um, cavalry, about 10% and task force about 10%. We compare that to over here, Ranger gives us the best bullet velocity, but no increase to actual range. Reinforced heavy, 902 again, task force 902. Looking like reinforced heavy might actually be the way to go for such a minuscule difference. That's probably gonna be the best barrel on the QBZ. Krig actually has two different damage drop-offs, but it doesn't really matter in this case because it's not gonna affect the TTK um, for that other damage drop-off. The only one that really matters is his first one. But as you can see here, the range is increased by the ultralight and the contour, which will actually help that bullet velocity as well. So if we go with the contour, we get 902 bullet velocity with an increased range. Um, or we could just go with the Ranger. We get 1100 bullet velocity. So it's going to be pinpoint feel a lot closer to hit scan, um, but it's not going to necessarily get you all the range out of it because it's not going to be a change to range. Keep it in mind that the bullet velocity on the AMAX is right around 950. So now let's go ahead and take a look at how these range barrels impact the TTK. So what I've done here is I've created an average TTK chart, kind of what I've been doing with a lot of these. If they have a difference in chest and limb damage, you wanna kind of average that out because if you're hitting the arm and that's gonna lower your TTK, it's gonna definitely change how the gun fits into the meta and how good it can actually be used. We have the Groza average here, which is this blue line. Very good, very good TTK. Personally, I feel like it could be a little bit more of a struggle to, to hit shots at range, but that's why it's one of those good sniper support classes. Um, it doesn't have quite a fast TTK as the FFAR or the AMAX, which would be below this line um, or right next to this line. But you can see that when you give a practical TTK to the FFAR with the average, it, it does slow it down just a little bit, but it still is insanely melty um, if you had really good accuracy with this weapon. As we go through the line, we got the XM4. It would be very good if it actually had a barrel that had bullet velocity, but you really have no choice but to use it as a sniper support class because none of the barrels are going to help it. Positive side, you get an extra attachment. Um, TTK is still good, but you're gonna get melted out by several other weapons, including the meta SMGs, MAC-10, Cold War MP5, Modern Warfare MP5, as well as even the Bullfrog uh, for that matter. Uh, if we go through here, we have the QBZ which is this orange one, it having a 700 TTK here basically means you cannot use it as a close range option at all. It's not sniper support. It can only be used for long range, keeping in mind that the growl sits over here at 900, which is this little line between this orange and bluish line. So the growl would be a better option at range for this weapon because even if it does have low recoil, so does the growl. Um, so the growl ends up beating that out. If, uh, so that's why the QBZ doesn't really fit into the meta um, unless they could lower this TTK to fit into that. Nice thing about it is you don't have to average. No matter where the shots hit, you get the same TTK. It just ends up being that that TTK is a little bit too slow compared to what the meta weapons are for range weapons, besides sniper rifles, obviously. And then we got the Krig, which also kind of sucky TTK up close. And then you can see the drop-off drops to 830. I feel like this one, it can be a laser beam. I just don't feel it's as accurate or doesn't have necessarily the bullet velocity of the growl, which sits again at 900. So if you're able to hit your shots, you can manage with the bullet velocity at 1100. You're more than welcome to try that. It could be the, the new meta as long as people are understanding how the weapons work. The max bullet velocity, though, is going to be sitting right around 1100, but that's not going to give you the range at all. So this number will actually come back a little bit. Um, keeping in mind that the Growl has a bullet velocity, max bullet velocity around 1300. Um, so that's kind of the, the measuring bar. Kilo is right around there as well. So you're talking about Modern Warfare weapons just vastly superior in bullet velocity. If they go and tweak the bullet velocities a little bit, that might rein it in and give you a better idea on what the weapons need to look like. So that's kind of gives you kind of a snapshot of why the Krig is or isn't meta. It's because that bullet velocity issue, it's only 1100 or 900 versus 1300 of the growl. Even though it's TTK statistically, it should be good for engagements of 50 plus meters for pretty much most of the long range options. M13, growl, all those would fit in here. If you're good, AMAX is going to be the way to go just because of the way that works. 
So there's all kinds of trade-offs here, but at least we have a little bit more information on what barrels we should be using on our Cold War rifles. So to kind of simplify it, XM4, no barrel is the way to go. Same with the AK-47, just stack it with other attachments that make sense. Groza, it seems like it has a pretty consistent barrel that is the only one you should be using, which is the Gru Composite. Based off all the, the stats in terms of bullet velocity and range, that one is going to be the best overall attachment. And I think the big difference here is it says in, it, it doesn't even talk about range, which obviously you're getting range on top of that. Uh, if we go to the FFAR, it's really going to be a matter if you want to go with the reinforced heavy, that's going to give you both bullet velocity and range. You want to go with the Ranger, which is going to give you max bullet velocity. Or you want to go with the task force that gives you a little bit of range, a little bit of bullet velocity, but changes up your recoil a little bit. So you got three different options for the FFAR. All are good. You just got to understand how you're going to be using the weapon. QBZ, you pretty much only have one option, in my opinion, which is going to be the Ranger that's going to give you the max bullet velocity. You could go with the Reinforced Heavy. Just keep in mind that you're going to get a little bit less bullet velocity, which is going to hurt the strength of this weapon, which is that it's laser accurate. And then we end up with the same issue with the Krig. Pretty much the Ranger is going to be the way to go, so you can get that 1100 bullet velocity. If you want to go with the Contour to get a little bit more range, um, as well as bullet velocity, you're still going to be sitting at 902 bullet velocity, which is slower than the AMAX. And that's kind of one of the weaknesses of the AMAX is the bullet velocity. So at least now you kind of have a better idea on what you should be using. Pretty much all the classes, you'll probably use the agency suppressor, keep off the mini map. Um, under barrel is likely either going to be the bruiser or the field agent grip, depending on the recoil pattern. Um, bruiser, mainly vertical. Field agent grip, horizontal and vertical. Kind of a little bit of balance of both. Ammunition, you're primarily going to go for the biggest mag. Then depending on whether or not you're going to use the weapon as a sniper support or its own long range option, you're either going to go with an optic to help clear that up. Just choose the one that makes the most sense for the situation, either reflex or like three or four X or whatever the case is. Or the other option is to go with the stock. Then for the stock, you pretty much have two different options. You can either go with combat stock or raider stock. Raider stock is a little bit faster, but sometimes it feels a little bit too fast when you're strafing. So it's kind of one of those things you got to get used to. Downside with the combat stock is it is a little bit slower when it comes down to ADS speed. And that's pretty much it. That's going to be completely on you. But at least now you have an idea of what barrel you should be using for all of the Cold War rifles. So hopefully that all makes sense. If you enjoyed the video, learned something new, please do me a favor, hit that like button. If you're brand new, looking to find your way back, double check, make sure you subscribe with notifications on. Appreciate all the support on the channel. Thank you for watching as always. Have a great day.